Hello everybody, welcome to my bathroom. Never did I think that I would be filming in here, but today's the day. To my right, you can see that I have a lovely variegated Hindu robe. This is Hoya Carnosa Compacta Monoloa. It's the inner variegated Hoya Compacta, and it's gorgeous. Um, this plant I actually inherited from a woman who had been growing it for about seven or eight years and I was super excited to see it. It came to me from Craigslist. A woman named Deb had a, an extensive Hoya collection and she was downsizing her home and moving. So I took the opportunity and I got this guy, which is gorgeous. It actually, when I first got it, had super long tendrils. The longest came to about here. Um, but recently I discovered that this plant has mealybugs. And if you know anything about Hoya and mealybugs is that this is the one you do not want to get mealybugs in. And that's because they can hide in these little crevices that are throughout the plant. And that's what ultimately can lead to their demise. So I'm taking action and getting serious about the mealybug situation with this plant. So I wanna take you all along with me to show you what I'm gonna do for this one. All right, peeps, so here's the deal. There are a few ways that you can attack mealybugs on your plant. The first way is by taking a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. And you can just basically take the Q-tip and go in through all the little nooks and crannies of the plant to search for the mealybug. And what that isopropyl alcohol does is that it deteriorates the exoskeleton of the mealybug. <laughs> this is gonna dip over. Basically, it just deteriorates the exoskeleton of the mealybug so it can't live any longer and it dries it out super quick. Like when you use alcohol for a zit, think of it like that, but for mealybugs. Um, but since this is such a mature plant, I have gone through and I've swabbed the plant for mealybugs, but there are still some that are hidden that I can't see. So I'm taking a little bit more drastic action with this plant. The first thing that I did was actually chop quite a bit of this plant off. So I took cuttings of the ends because it looked like the mealybug infestation was coming from the base. When I inherited this plant, um, I did look through it, but I obviously didn't look close enough because a lot of the mealybugs that I ended up finding are down in the base of the plant. And they make these little nests that look like little cotton balls and they're nasty and you can't get them even if you try your hardest and spend hours cleaning the plant. So what I decided that I'm gonna do is I'm going to soak the plant in a mixture of warm water, isopropyl alcohol, some dish detergent, as well as some neem oil. Now basically what all that does, the dish detergent and the neem oil suffocate the mealybugs and then the isopropyl alcohol dries them out. Now, what I'm gonna do with this guy, I already said that I propagated some. I've already done the mix with soaking with my propagations so that I can try to minimize the risk of losing this plant while also hopefully um, deteriorating the possibility of mealybugs being in the propagations because what I'm trying to do is soak the plant deeply where the mix will penetrate all the nooks and crannies of the plant. So I have my little trusty potting tub here, which I use for all my potting projects. And I'm going to fill this with that solution. And then I'm gonna tip this puppy upside down and let it soak in the water. And I'm gonna let it sit there for about a half an hour and then I'm gonna let it dry. And then I'll probably repeat this process in about one, one to one and a half weeks, um, just because the life cycle of the mealybug is that they will end up laying eggs. And after those eggs hatch, you want to make sure that you catch the rest of the infestation. So this is a process you're going to want to repeat a couple times. Okay, so the first thing that you have to do is make your solution. So I'm just going to move my little plant. I don't have measurements for this, so just bear with me. My bones are cracking. I have not been crouching for this long in a long time. So here we go. I'm gonna use a good amount of isopropyl alcohol. Now we are dealing with coronavirus right now and isopropyl alcohol is also a good cleaning agent. So I'm gonna to try 
to conserve this as much as possible because I can use it for other things and go heavy also on the dish detergent because that's a little bit more readily available right now. So I'm gonna do the isopropyl alcohol, the neem oil, and the dish detergent, and then I'm gonna run some warm water. And then we're gonna tip this plant upside down and let it sit in this mix. All right, for the neem oil, I have neem oil concentrate, which is great. I use this Dine Grow brand, and that means you can make your own spray and mix. Um, you can also get this as a pre-made spray, but I tend to like um, using the concentrate a bit more. It goes really far. Neem oil also gets kind of hard like honey, so you might have to um, you might have to heat this up in the microwave a little bit for it to get liquidy again. Now some good dish detergent. And then I'm gonna run my hot water. filled my tub with the isopropyl alcohol, the dish detergent, and the neem oil. Now I have to tip this plant upside down into here, and what I'm going to do is soak the entire plant. I'm going to do the top foliage, and then I'm also going to soak the root base because mealybugs lay their eggs in the soil as well as on the plant, so great. Um, but here we go. So this guy is in an 8-inch hanging basket. I'm just gonna remove the top clip. I have my tub of water down here and I'm going to soak this plant. Now this is gonna be messy and a lot of the soil might fall out, but this is a good opportunity for me to see how root bound this plant is. And if I have to upsize the pot, I will just do that. So here we go. So this has been soaking. You wanna make sure that you submerge all the foliage in the solution so that it gets in every single nook and cranny of this plant. It's really important that you do that. So I have this here. I'm just gonna push it down into the water, just making sure that it's completely submerged. And then I'm gonna flip it. Now I'm going to soak the soil because those mealy bugs do lay their eggs in the soil as well as in the foliage. So you want to make sure that this entire plant gets treated and then you're going to want to do it again in another week to two weeks. It's good that you can see the roots are healthy on this plant, which is a really good sign. That means it's going to have a little bit easier time recovering. While that's soaking, I want to show you some of the propagation methods that I'm using in order to emergency propagate this plant. Um, since this mother plant was infested with mealy bugs, I really want to make sure that I can prolong its life if the infestation ends up being to the plant's demise. So I took quite a few propagations off of this plant and I already did the submerging method with these so they are in theory clean and good to go. Um, the first thing that I did was I took some cuttings and now this is the to-go container method that I talked about in my Hoya propagation video. Basically all I did with this though, that's a little bit different, is that I used LECA as the base. So as opposed to using orchid bark, I used LECA and then I'm making sure that that's moist to see if this works well in the to-go container propagation method. I do have this under one of my grow lights in my living room and so this will maintain the moisture around the plant and boost the humidity and the LECA is a, an inorganic solution for you to propagate your plants, which means that the mealybugs, which like to lay their eggs in organic matter, won't have a very good opportunity to do that within this material. So this is one way that I'm propagating. I'm also propagating some cuttings in this little jar with LECA just to see how well this does. Um, I've had some success with my Hoya Australis Lisa rooting it in a jar with some LECA, so I'm hoping that this will do the same for me. Uh, there are quite a few aerial root nodes on this guy, so I'm really hoping that this works. 
um, because I like being able to see the roots as they grow just to see how the root structure is developing. Finally, I did the Ziploc bag propagation method. BB's Plants talks a lot about this on her channel, but basically all I did was take one node cuttings of the Hoya Mauna Loa and I put them into a Ziploc bag that had some potting soil in the bottom. Now this creates a nice little greenhouse for the plant. It creates that high humidity environment that they thrive in while also giving it the opportunity um, to grow roots without having to support a big chunk of the plant. That's why I took one node cuttings because it only has to support the two leaves that are on that one node as opposed to a whole branch trying to develop a new root structure. So that's a little tip for you if you're trying to root something quickly. Try the one node method as opposed to trying to root several nodes of a plant uh, in order to propagate quickly. Okay, this has been soaking for about a half an hour now, so I'm going to flip this over and basically all that that does is make sure that the soil gets penetrated with this neem oil and alcohol solution, hopefully killing any of the mealybugs that are alive or the eggs that are in the soil. Now that this is soaking, I'm going to leave it in the solution for another half an hour while the root structure and the soil takes up that solution. Now, after I'm finished with this, I'm going to put this in a terracotta pot because the soil is going to be really waterlogged after taking in all of that solution. So I want to make sure that I give it the opportunity to dry out as much as possible um, before I put it back in its original pot. It's also going to lose some of the soil that it's currently growing in. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure to fill that back, but for the purpose of uh, making sure that you don't waterlog the roots, I'm just gonna transfer it into the terracotta first, let the root structure dry a little bit, and then put it back in the original container. So I'm hoping not to shoot back in my bathroom again because I'm hopeful that my plants are all doing well without infestations. Um, but this is actually one of the last times that you'll probably see me in this apartment. I am planning to move in the end of May back to Minneapolis, and I'm excited because my new apartment has more windows than my current unit does. Um, I unfortunately will not be able to drill into the walls or the ceiling, so I am looking for some solutions to hang plants that don't involve either of those uh, methods. So if you have any suggestions for hanging plants, uh, make sure to send them my way. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.